here's a problem from the sample test that you can find on our class website. And it says, use Ampere's law to find the magnetic field at this point P inside of a hollow, infinitely long, current-carrying wire that is carrying 12 amps of current. So this is air in here in the hollow region. This is the metal wire. Of course, it's air on the outside. We want to know the field at this point P. Before we do any math using Ampere's law, let's figure out the direction of the field. As you can see, I show it points down. How do I know that? Well, we know fields circle wires. So using our very first right-hand rule, if you have a current coming out of the page, we know around that wire there's a circular field that goes like this. So you should guess that there's a similar circular field inside the wire. Okay, so imagine a circle passing through point P that is centered on the center of the wire here. And your fingers curling, you know, thumb in the direction of current would be curling around like this, counterclockwise. So tangent to that circle is down. So the magnetic field at point P is down. Over here at this point it would be over, here it would be up, here it would be over, and it circles around. So we at least get the direction right before we have to do any math. Now here is Ampere's law. It says the line integral b dot ds around an imaginary closed loop, that's what that little circle means, a closed loop, equals a constant, mu naught, times the amount of current passing through that loop. Okay, um, passing through your imaginary loop, which we call the Amperean loop. Okay, so what we want to do is make the math easy for ourselves. So we want to make this line integral go away. And so that could happen if we pick an imaginary loop where B does not depend on which piece of the loop you're at. If B doesn't depend on DS, then um, you could pull B out of the integral. And we also want the angle between B and DS to be um, parallel to each other. We want them to be an angle of zero. Because remember, dot products always involve the magnitude of one, the magnitude of the other, times the cosine and the angle between them. So if B and DS point the same way, the angle theta is zero, and cosine of zero is one. So how do we do that? Well, we would want to pick an imaginary loop that B is going to have the same value everywhere on that loop. So imagine a circle drawn through point P that's centered on the actual center of the wire. You should guess then, because that circle is equally distant to the outer edge and the inner edge of the wire, that the field strength should be the same everywhere on that circle. Okay, so we meet one condition. And if we remember, fields circle the wire, so the magnetic field is tangent to that circle everywhere. So a little piece of that wire, of that circular, uh, excuse me, of that imaginary circle, um, will have a ds vector always pointing the same way as B, they're both tangent to that imaginary circle. So because we met these two conditions, the integral on the left is just going to reduce to B times integral ds. Okay, the dot product goes away again because the angle between B and ds is zero, it's cosine of zero is one. The vector symbols go away because they point again along that same direction and B came out because it doesn't depend on which little piece of your circle you're picking. Integral ds is, of course, just the length around your imaginary circle, which in this case has a radius c. So we could continue on the left side by saying integral ds is just 2 pi c, where again, c is the radius of your imaginary circle. So we've reduced the integral to just the magnetic field times the length around some imaginary loop. So that's nice and easy. On the other side of the equation, it's a little more complicated. As you can see, we need to take the constant mu naught and multiply by the amount of current inside our imaginary loop. Now, of course, the current, the 12 amps of current, is everywhere in the metal wire, this dark shaded region. But if we draw a circle through point P at radius C, it is only containing a smaller fraction of that total area of this circle. So what you have to do is say, find the ratio of the areas. The area of the circle of radius C minus the hole, because there's no current here in the hole, 
over the ratio uh, or over the area of the actual wire of radius B minus the whole of radius A. So what I've done is I've taken the total current in the wire, 12 amps, and I've multiplied by the ratio of those two areas. So pi C squared, again, is the area of a circle of radius C. But I have to subtract out the area of the whole, pi A squared, because there's no current here in the whole. So this up numerator here is the area of a little circular sliver, a little donut. The denominator is the area of this shaded region. So it's pi B squared minus the area of the whole. If this were a solid cylinder, and there's an example of that in the PowerPoint, without a hole, just these two terms would be gone, and you'd still have the, the ratio of the areas, pi c squared over pi b squared, but you wouldn't subtract out the area of the hole. So we have to uh, take the total current times the ratio of the areas to find the amount of current passing through our little sliver of the circle. Okay, um, you could cancel some pi's everywhere, and you can divide by 2 pi c, and you end up with an answer that you can plug numbers in, given all these values, and you get your magnetic field strength at this direction shown.